I just want to confirm, is this an episode that we're recording right now? Oh, it's going to be a great episode. I didn't realize that. I don't feel like I'm ready. Oh, you're ready. Are you kidding? This is like spontaneity is the key to greatness, Kay. (laughs) I thought we were just having a conversation. I didn't realize. No, I mean, listen, on my show, I've had the FedEx man come in. I've had a dog come through the window. It's like the chandelier falls down. It's all great content. (laughs) Here is singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent, and your host. It's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. Hey, 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 it's a beautiful day. And we're going to the UK today to visit with Kay. Ha <laughs> ha, yes indeed, it's Kay Suthar. She's a podcaster from Great Brit, and I haven't had a guest from the UK on in a while, and I'm so happy to be back. But before we get into that, I want to thank all you guys for supporting the show. We're getting like huge downloads from your interest in this show, podcasting your global career. Do me a favor, please, and give us a five-star review in the Apple Podcasts. The instructions are at the end of this show in the show notes. You can just click on it's three easy steps. It'll take you about two minutes to do so and leave us a comment about what you like about the show. Kay Suthar from the UK is my guest today and she has a podcast titled Make Your Mark and she got into it all by accident. (laughs) She started this idea of the podcast and then outsourced all of the work behind it and lo and behold her agency was born. So you better strap up your seatbelts because we're taking a ride today from the Music City all the way to the UK to hang out with Kay Suthar. I just want to confirm, is this an episode that we're recording right now? Oh, it's going to be a great episode. I didn't realize that. I don't feel like I'm ready. Oh, you're ready. Are you kidding? This is like spontaneity is the key to greatness, Kay. (laughs) I thought we were just having a conversation. I didn't realize. No, I mean, listen, on my show, I've had the FedEx man come in. I've had a dog come through the window. It's like the chandelier falls down. It's all great content. (laughs) Even if you you were inverted right now and upside down in your room, that would be a golden moment for us. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Okay, so I guess what happened was um, during the pandemic, um, actually, let's take a step back. Okay. I was doing live events, right? I was known for live events, being in the back of the room, closing sales, right? And I was doing that for about five years and I loved it. I was doing it all over the world, living out of a suitcase. I'm like, this is like the best life ever, right? Living out of a suitcase. absolutely loved it. Can I stop you for a moment? I want to ask you, were you doing it for your own um, brand or for someone else's? This was for someone else. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right? This was for somebody else. And then the pandemic happened, which meant there was no more live events. Right. right? And so then I was like, well, you got to keep promoting yourself. You still got to put yourself out there. You don't stop just because there's a pandemic. And so I thought, well, let me tell people what I do and let me use this whole podcasting thing that everybody's going on about, right? So I was like, okay, let me just get myself on a few podcasts and nobody would actually even reply to me. I, it was like tumbleweed. I wouldn't get no replies from anybody. And so I tweaked and kind of changed things around on where I found people, how I approached them and things like that. And then all of a sudden I got booked on 100 podcasts in 60 days. How did that happen? How did that happen? Well, the way that happened was the way I was approaching people and the way I was asking them and me doing the research and digging out what they've already done, listening to their podcast and then saying, hey, I listened to your last podcast with Joe Bloggs who spoke about X, Y and Z, right? I feel that I've got a different perspective to give to your audience. How about if we jump on a call and I can tell you what that different perspective is? That is fabulous. You went to their wants immediately. 
yeah. right? And their needs, actually. So um, you cracked the code. That's fantastic that you did that. And by the way, just as a side note, I love having a Brit on my show. When I started my podcast, I started going, I said, I don't want to be just in the States. This is 2015. And I started looking for artists all over the UK. And so I haven't had a Brit on in a long time. So I'm so happy to hear that wonderful British accent. So please continue. (laughs) Awesome. And so as I was getting on all these podcasts, right, and, and to be fair, it was a pandemic. We weren't doing anything. So it was easy to do 100 podcasts in 60 days. Right? Right. It might be a little bit much now because everything's got, everyone's got things going on. But once I kind of figured out how to do this, I was, I was well on my way. And then what happened after that was I was getting on these podcasts and the host was saying to me, oh, what's the name of your podcast? And I'm like, oh crap I don't have one right (laughs) so I'm like okay I guess I gotta go create a podcast now people are asking about it and so by the way I love the name of your podcast make your mark that is so cool yes thank you um yeah the whole the name behind that was you know me talking to people on how they're unique, how their business is unique, and how they really made their mark in the world, right? How they're doing it right now, like what kind of different techniques and strategies um, are they using to put themselves out there to be known? And so that's where that name came from. And so as I was getting on these podcasts, I was like, oh my God, okay, I've got to create a podcast now. And so I kind of was digging around and by this time I already knew so many different hosts because I was on their show and I was just asking them, I was like, I need to pick your brains. You you got your own podcast. What systems do you use? How do you use it? What's your processes? I was just asking the people that do it, right? And so I kind of got the pieces together and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so much work. You can't do this on your own right like the yeah. video editing the audio editing then you got to do the show notes you got to do the distribution like i was like this is a lot and so what i started doing then is one at a time um i found someone that does the graphics i found someone that does audio and video editing and i started hiring freelancers right because i knew th- this area was not the area that i wanted to do week in week out right because it yeah. can turn into a little bit of a hamster wheel yeah. and so all i wanted to do was create content and speak with people all right and record episodes and so what i didn't realize i did is i created a team right i created a team and so then i had my podcast launched and released and episodes were going out people were like how have you done this so quick and i'm like I'm not doing this on my own. I've got a bunch of people that's helping me out, right? And so then they were like, huh, do you think that they could do that for us? And so then all of a sudden, the Make Your Mark agency was then born, right? I didn't even realize what was happening, what was going on. I was there to kind of promote myself. And all I did was when people asked for certain things, I then gave them because I was like, the market is already telling me what they want. Let's create this business because clearly people need podcasts, but they don't know how to do it. They don't want to do it like I do want to do all the kind of editing and everything. And so that's where the the podcasting agency was then born. That is great. And, you know, it's funny how podcasting has a way of um, teaching you like what you need, like, because, you you know, your skills obviously are like myself, I belong in front of a microphone, whether that's in a recording studio or a podcast or whatever. So if you're out of your genius zone, you're just laboring in the ditch and you're not really moving your career career along. And there are other people who are set up to do that. So kudos to you, girl, for recognizing that and putting it together quickly. That's really awesome. Thank you. And like I said, it just all kind of happened by accident, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm just kind of, I'm someone that just kind of rolls with it, right? I, I don't have a plan. I don't have a plan. The, the only plan I have is let's get rich. Let's get wealthy, <laughs> right? Let's make some money, right? I like so- that plan. <laughs> <laughs> right? can, can you, after this episode, can you send me that plan? Because I want to read it tonight before I yeah, go to sleep. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> and so um, 
I'm kind of someone that just goes with it right now. If the market already telling you what they want, why fight it? Right. Why? Yeah. Fight? You already know you've got people there that are going to buy your services or your products. So let's just go with it and see where it's going to take you. If it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. You just kind of move on to the next thing. So can I ask you just in terms of your journey, um, when did you start your podcast? I st oh my god it's going to be almost 2 years in July this year. Congratulations. So you've um you've done really well because you reached out for resources like immediately and my my journey's been a little longer and more cumbersome than yours I think because I've been doing this since 2015. Mm -hmm. Um and I know I, I always knew I'd find my place but it was almost like I was waiting for that to occur in here to say, where is that place? Uh, and so uh, I think kudos to uh, the group that we are, um, find ourselves engaged in Pantheon.fm, which has been just fabulous. Um, really like-minded, spirited entrepreneurs. And I give you credit for coming from across the pond all the way to middle America <laughs> to, uh, to hang out with the cats in Salt Lake City. That's great. <laughs> Right. And it's again, it's funny how that's worked out. Um, and most of my network, my coaches, mentors are all based in the US. Yeah. Right? Well, here's the here's the observation I've made as an American watching the Brits and being interested in Europe um, as a place for my music podcast, which has kind of transformed. But I, I noticed that um, the Brits were always ahead of the Americans in sound in lighting, and this is going back about 15 years or so. I don't know where it is now, but podcasting is lagging way behind the U.S. I mean, the U.S., there's no place in the world where podcasting is stronger, but I feel like um, the Europe is ready to catch on. I think it's slowly starting to get the idea that there's something going on with this podcasting that we want to be more um, you know, entrenched with. Are you feeling that from over there? You know, absolutely. So you're, you're right. Like podcasting um, isn't very popular in the UK. Um, and it's funny because I feel, and I felt this like, you know, forever, that UK are always behind the US, right? Well, you guys are always one step further in a lot of the stuff that you got going on. And so uh, uh, it's slowly catching on in the UK, but very slowly. People are still umming and ahhing about podcasting here. Uh, yeah. Does it really work? Is it necessary? It's time. Th there's still a lot of skepticism. Ske oh my God, I can't even say the words anymore, <laughs> right? But people, people aren't too sure about podcasting. I think you meant query. There's a lot of query about it. There's a, there's a lot so of query about it, yes. <laughs> well, uh, wait a minute now. I got to say that... Um, I think it's always been a ping pong match between the Brits and, and the U.S. Because don't forget, um, everybody when I was growing up is the Beatles were everything. But really, when you re re rewind history, um, the Beatles were listening to like blues, like real blues and rock and roll and the Stones. And so it's always been a back and forth seesaw thing. It's like. You guys took what we were doing and, and resynthesized it. And then all of us were listening. I was a British rock freak when I was a kid, man. That's all I wanted to hear was British rock. <laughs> and so, it, and then we synthesized that in our minds and recreated it. So I think there's a give and take there all the time. There's a love relationship going back and forth, you know? Yeah, yeah possibly, possibly. But yeah. I do feel like the, the mindset is very, very different from the UK and the US. Very different. In what uh, way? Um, I think with US, just your culture, you're a lot more entrepreneurial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, especially if you're in that space, um, you think, wow, is everybody like this? And they're really not. But there are a lot of entrepreneurs um, and probably more and more so. And I think the podcasting space is lending credibility to that yeah. idea that, wow, if there was ever a way to, you know, go in and, and it's still being figured out even by us in the Pantheon and, you know, with Josh, you know, with, with the way he's uh, lending his expertise to what we're all trying to build. It's almost like this is such a unique idea that, well, how do you make money? Well, the podcast, well, it's not just 
you know, I sell a sandwich and I charge five dollars. There's a lot more. <laughs> I wish to it, it was than easy that. like that. I wish I it know. was. <laughs> well, for some people it is. I mean, if you're going if you know, if you're a monster in the business, um you, you can do that that road, but for some of us it's a lot different than that. Um what what really attracted you to the podcast space? Um I think it it was just the fact that I didn't want to just do nothing during the pandemic and I had to do something, right? And you yeah. couldn't leave anywhere, you're stuck indoors, so the only thing was podcasting so at least that is something still getting out there on a global scale right and so i was like well this is pretty cool because i get to stay at home no expenses right because when you're on someone else's podcast guess what they're the one that has to do all the work not you you just show up right yeah. and i'm like this is pretty cool and so i think it was it was the fact that first of all the situation we were in couldn't go anywhere anyway right and secondly when i started doing it um i was like this is easy like i don't have to pay for a flight to go speak on stage i don't have to get a hotel then food and all these expenses right but still being able to network with people all over the world and get a global distribution yeah let me ask you about the public speaking. Are you um, doing that presently? Is that something in your wheelhouse? Yes. So there, there is stages that I'm speaking on, and I have been speaking on before the pandemic as well. Um, and so it's very, very different for sure. But it's, it's an alternative method because when you're speaking on stage, live on stage, you're only speaking to the people that are in front of you in that room. Yeah. Right? With a podcast, once it's out there, it's evergreen. It's out there forever. And you're reaching people on a global scale. People could be listening to it the day it's released, a month after, a year after, maybe even 10 years after. Yeah. Yeah, it has so much value in that way. And I think people, um, businesses are starting to get the idea of, well, wait a minute, I'm paying X amount of dollars for these ads. Let's just take Facebook, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's it scrolls through <laughs> and it's boom, it's gone, you know, until the next one comes up or the next one. And really with, um, like you mentioned, like if somebody really gets acclimated to your brand and your style and they go, wow, I just listened to this um, episode with, K. Suthar was really, really cool. And uh, she she interviewed this guy, James Kevin O'Connor. Did you hear this? This is like, oh, we're not doing that. I'm interviewing you. Um, so <laughs> so, so they start digging and they, they listen to episode after episode of K interviewing all these people. And then they become a fan and, uh, you know, a follower. So um, anybody that has that kind of loyalty uh, to you, certainly somebody who's looking for advertising their product or their brand or their coaching or whatever it is, would uh, would welcome this because it's coming up episode after episode. Yes, most definitely. And and the great thing about doing podcasts as well is you can probably like do two or three in a day, right? If you've yeah. got nothing else going on, right? right? But you couldn't get on three separate flights on a day. Yeah. Right. Or you could, but you'd be really tired by the end of it, right? Yeah. Um, and so you can get a lot more distribution, a lot more conversations, a lot more networking. Because I feel that podcasting, it's um, it's relationship marketing. It's networking, right? Yeah. It's not just about getting on to someone's podcast and you just, you know, talking about me, 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 right? It is actually connecting with the host, connecting with the audience, right? There's just a lot more to it. You really yeah. need to kind of get to know the host and what they want. And there's a lot more things that just go into it. Tell me, Kay, about your public speaking. What topics do you cover um, when you go to do public speaking? And like, how long would an event be for you? Is it... Is it like 90 minutes? Is it two hours? It's an hour? Like what's what's a, top, a typical um, afternoon for you for a public speaking engagement? Oh, um, so it really, it re I'm, first of all, all I'll be talking about is podcasting, right? Whether it is podcast production 
um, or guesting on podcasts, right? And finding the right podcast to actually approach and how to do that. So there's, there's kind of two sides to it. Um, and so that could be like, it could be an hour talk. It could be a 30 minute talk, even a 20 minute talk. It all depends on what the host is looking for. Um, and so a lot of the, the talks and stages I've done in the, the recent um, years since the pandemic have been on Zoom, right? So where people are having Zoom events, but they're still looking for speakers for that event and it's all digital and it's all virtual. Again, right. this is great mm -hmm. too, because again, you're able to reach a global audience, right? People can come to a digital event, right? From all over the world. Right. And it's not going to cost them much. All they have to do is pay for admission to the event. If there is an admission to the event, some of them are free. Right. And so that has been great doing virtual events as well, because, again, you're doing it from the comfort of your own home. Going back out there and doing live events is awesome because I would still like the face to face interaction, actually meeting people, especially where we haven't been able to do that for the last couple of years. Yeah so important but it does take a lot out of you right remembering that i'm from yeah. the uk flying to the us time zone differences that's right? a lot to deal with it really it is. is and it's exhausting too because of the time travel hotels get, getting into the right place what happens if the plane's late and you just lost like three days how many podcasts could you do in three days exactly. right exactly yeah. exactly and so, so that's why i love podcasting right um and the thing is, you get to meet people you never thought you would meet, yeah. right? On a podcast I, because you have a podcast, right? Like, do, do you have you heard of someone called Bob Berg? No. Bob Berg, he is the co-author of The Go Giver. The Go Giver is a book that I read a um, few years back on the beach in Bali when I lived there. I could not put this book down. Guess what? He came onto my podcast. Nice, right? It's the relationships, right? You become, yeah. it's it, they turn into friendships, really. They do, they yeah. do. Um, and again, you can meet people from all over the world, right? People you never thought you would meet because you have a podcast. Because people want to be on podcasts, right? Yes. And it's very easy to invite them along and say, "Hey." I read your book or, hey, you know, I, you know, I was part of your program. I would love to kind of have you on my podcast. People don't often turn the opportunity down. <laughs> this right? is very true. This is very true. So um, being a podcast star and being also a public speaker, when am I going to see you at the O2 and can I get tickets? <laughs> <laughs> see oh. you don't you didn't think i knew all about the o2 i know all <laughs> about great britain and london um oh let me ask you um as we're moving along in the interview i want to ask you before we uh wrap up what do you like to do for you what does Kay do for herself when she needs a little of a break from business like what do you like to do just to chill out what's your favorite type to of thing chill to do? out oh yeah to chill out um, like to rest do you know what? I love just watching movies. Yeah. Right? Um, I like action movies, like the new Wick movies coming out in the UK on Friday this week. I'm like, yes, because I've seen all three of them before. The fourth one, I can't wait. Um, and I'm a Marvel freak. Like, I love Marvel. <laughs> and Marvel comics. Heroes. Yes. Right. I've seen them all, too, in order. <laughs> So I can Did you, you, you have to died. watch you have to watch it in order. Is that you correct? Do. You do. <laughs> and then you've got seasons in between. Like, yes, because when I was growing up, like I I wanted to be a superhero. Right. But quickly learned that there's no university for superheroes. Like that doesn't actually exist, right? <laughs> well, I think you created your own being the podcast, make your mark lady of the UK. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I think so too, yes. And so yeah, where, where there's a superhero and Marvel, like, I'm all about that. I can watch TV, chill out, um, eat popcorn, you know, nice. guacamole, all of that stuff to kind of just, just chill out and relax. That's awesome. Awesome, Kay. Um, best place for people to reach Kay Suthar? 
Oh, the best place would be you can go onto my website, which is makeyourmarkagency.com. Um, there is a spot there where they can book a call, learn a bit more about what I do, um, the services that we provide, or you can actually reach me on LinkedIn and even YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Kate, last words of wisdom. What would you like to drop in for anybody out there considering uh, doing a podcast or moving into this space to help, um, you know, elevate their brand or their business? What can you say to them that would convince them to reach out to you to help make that step? Okay, so if you're looking to start your own podcast, you're a business owner, I feel like it's an absolute must, right? If you've got a product, a service, or even something to bring awareness to, you need to have your own podcast. However, not everybody is always ready, right? And the way to know that you're ready for your own podcast is firstly, get booked on at least 20 podcasts yourself as a guest, right? Once you have got that under your belt, and you can see how other podcasts are, you know, using their system, what kind of systems, and you still say, okay, I want to create my own podcast, then go ahead and do it. What I find a lot of people do is they come to me and say, hey, I want to start a podcast. I'm like, fantastic. How much do you know about podcasts and that nothing? I'm like, how many podcasts have you been a guest on? Zero. How many podcasts have you listened to? None. Well, you're not ready to be launching your own podcast, right? We, you need to kind of go on podcast to kind of learn a little bit, see how things are happening. If this is the right fit for you, don't just jump in and say, I want to do a podcast just because you feel like everybody's now doing it. You've got to make sure it's the right fit for you. Uh, really great words of wisdom. Kay, this was really, really fun. Thank you so much for taking the time out to hang out with us today on Podcasting Your Global Career. And I just want to wish all of God's blessings on you, your family, and your business moving forward. Thank you for the opportunity, James. I love being on your show. Thanks again. Hey, if you guys like what's going on here, please leave a great review in the Apple Podcasts. I've left a simple review process in the show notes and we'd really appreciate it. And also, don't be shy. Forward this to your best friend because you know they need it. Hey, if you need some coaching, hit up the link in the show notes. It's calendly.com forward slash dharmic. And you can take a little chance with me and I'll get you on your way. That's a wrap for me today. I'm your host, James Kevin O'Connor. So until the next time, when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage. Ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery. If wishes were windows, I'd open one and find That freedom is really a simple state of mind So ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery Ride on, ride on, baby, baby, you and I can find the key Ride on, ride on, we can unlock each other's destiny I taste the breeze of freedom, it's tingling on my tongue Places that you never dreamed. 
I'll take you places That were pictures in your mind I'll take you places Take a ride with me 